Hey guys, what's the crack? Another Funkin' Gamer here. Now, a few of my friends and followers have been asking me, Hey, I'm not very talkative and I don't have a lot of equipment. Can I still stream? And in short, yes you can. Yes, you absolutely can. The uh, thing about streaming is you just do it at your own pace. Uh, but the more and the better equipment you have, the more viewers you will get. But if you're not that talkative and you don't have a whole lot of stuff, you can still do it and you can still have fun. So let me get into it. Now, I do a little streaming here and there. Nothing too serious. I don't have a set schedule and I don't really make money at all. But I feel like I have enough grasp of the basics and luckily for me, I'm the type of person who never shuts the up, which is an absolute bonus for a streamer. Now, before I begin, if you want pro tips, there are lots of resources out there. But for me, I recommend this guy. He does really detailed videos on streaming and Twitch and YouTube and overlays and everything. Very detailed, very professional, really cool guy. I highly recommend you check him out after this video or just now, just leave me right now, I don't care. The people who ask me about streaming would say, I don't think I can stream very long or stream very often or I'm not that talkative, or I don't want to be on camera. Now that's fine. Now other tip videos will say, look, consistency is key and all this equipment is essential. I would say it's not. You can start streaming at your own pace and start with the equipment you have. And if you enjoy it and if you want to do more, then invest and give more. Invest in more equipment and maybe train yourself to talk more, get used to being in front of a camera. Essentially, just go at your own pace. This is supposed to be fun for you, not just everyone else. The main question I receive about streaming is, how is it done? What software do you use? And the answer is OBS. Open Broadcast Software is a software I've been using from the beginning. Other software does exist. Other streaming software does exist. Some cost money, some doesn't, some more complex than others. But for beginners, I would recommend Open Broadcast Studio. It's free comes for different OS's, they update it often, and with a right tutorial, you can figure it out pretty quickly. So, just go to whatever uh, operating system you have, click on it, and once you open it up, I will see you in the next screen. All right, so here we are on the OBS software. Um, yeah, so it might seem confusing right now, and also you can see multiple versions of this screen, and uh, that can't be helped. Uh, because I'm streaming OBS itself, unless I just uh, fix it in post, which I won't. Uh, so anyway, what you want to understand first is down here you'll see scenes and then you'll see sources. So uh, I'll start with sources. Sources are the sources of media that you're pulling from your computer that you want to project on the screen above. So here I have display capture. That's one version of a scene you, or source you can grab. If you press plus here, you can add as many uh, sources as you want. Uh, I'll explain display capture first because it's up on screen. That'll display exactly what is on one of your monitors at, like in full. Uh, so that's what I'm using there. Uh, you can do color, I've never used that. Browser source, you can put in a URL and it'll project that URL exactly like that actual website. Uh, that's good for like pulling chat and stuff like that. Audio input and output, I've actually never used that, but that would probably be useful for pulling audio directly from a source rather than having a full desktop audio like you can see here on the right. Uh, image, uh, I have a few images like background images you can use for layouts uh, of your screen. You can make your design look cool. Uh, I've never used this, I've never used this. <laughs> Media source, I forget what this is again, uh, whatever. Uh, I'd say the most important ones are game capture, which I'm using right now uh, in the background. And when you when you hit game capture, it'll show you a selection here. You can title it whatever you want. So I tend to title it the name of the game. So you'll say game name, and then you'll hit OK. Uh, you can see I have a bunch listed already here. So I'll go to OK, and then it gives you this screen. And now when the game is running on your computer, you will uh, have to find it. So it'll say full screen application or specific window. I usually go with specific window because then that gives me more options here. I tap window and then window lists a bunch of app, uh, services or software that is currently running on the computer. So I have Hearthstone currently running on the computer. So if I select that, it'll pop up on screen. So I hit okay. And now all you guys can see is Hearthstone because that is the display I chose. Uh, actually, that depends on the order of sources, so I'm going to change that. 
So now back on this screen, you can see the game name, which is Hearthstone, and you see display. So it display is on the top, so that means it's actually always going to be in front. But if I move this up, if I just drag it up, that replaces uh, that replaces that. So that's that's basically what sources is. Um, you just pull a bunch of different information uh, to your screen above, and that's how you organize your sources. And then scenes is basically different versions of that. So I have tutorial is what I named this source right now, but I also made one that's full camera and game, which I'm going to switch to right now. Hello. And then we're going to go to game, and that's what I chose earlier. And um, yeah, so I am going to go into the settings right now. Okay, so moving into the settings, all you have to do is go up here to file, and then you want to go down to settings. And this is how you can kind of configure everything for recording and streaming. Now, general is fairly basic. It's language. It's the team of the... Ugh, that's too bright. Ranchy or Rackney? That's pretty cool. All right, so these are all different settings. Um, I don't use a whole lot of these. This is pretty handy for output confirmation dialogue in case you accidentally start a stream, which I've done a lot. Automatically record when streaming. That's also useful if you have a lot of space in your computer. Uh, okay, so that's general. Stream, probably the most important one. So stream type, streaming services. Uh, streaming services are typical ones that already exist like YouTube and Twitch. I don't know what the custom one is, but maybe that's something you built yourself if you're that advanced. So service, so these services list out a bunch of services that already exist. Um, Twitch and YouTube will be the most familiar to you guys. I use Restream.io, I'll get into that later, but basically it can stream multiple sources at once. Uh, so let's just for this example, well, I'll stay on Restream, okay. So, no, actually I'll go back to Twitch because that's simpler. Okay, so we're on Twitch. Uh, at this point, I'm actually going to skip to, I'm going to jump out of the settings for a moment, show, so I'll show you how to, uh, well, let me just go back here. As I said, I'm not professional here, guys. So here's the stream key. So we need to get the stream key, and you're like, where do I get that? So here's Twitch. So once you have a, an account on Twitch, uh, what you need to do is go into your account, go to your username on the right, go down to dashboard. And then when you're on dashboard, you'll see all these settings and you want to go down to channel and then you'll see stream key. Uh, thankfully for Twitch, stream key, their stream key, they have a bunch of confirmation messages. What you do is you go into it, you grab it, it's going to be like 20 digits long and you copy and paste that into, uh, you copy and paste that into OBS like I showed earlier. If you want to do it for YouTube really quick, you go into your YouTube live, dash live dashboard, no matter what account you have, it's always going to be a live dashboard. And then you want to scroll down and you can see stream key right here and you see reveal. And that's also copy and paste that and then bring it into your stream key part in OBS. Now for Restream IO, which is what I use, same thing when you start up Restream IO, it'll actually ask you to input all the channels that you have currently going on. So you go to add channel and I've added YouTube and Twitch and Mixer, which I never use. And what it does is it combines all of those and it makes a super stream key. And that super stream key is down here. And again, copy and paste that and then go back to OBS, go into your settings, go to stream. And then uh, you just paste that stream key in here. But you got to make sure that if you're Restream IO, that you put in the Restream IO, copy and paste that in here. Uh, make sure it always matches the service uh, of the stream key. Ah. Okay, so moving on, we're going to output. Uh, now, this is where stuff gets a little complicated, but thankfully they have a couple of tabs here to explain it. Uh, if you're only doing streaming, you want to come to the stream tab here. Yeah, you want to come to the stream tab here and it'll have a bunch of settings for stream tab. Now for me, I was very confused about this um, for a good while and probably still am. I'm not an expert at this, but there's a bunch of presets here. And when people want to stream like the highest quality ever, they'll like go to high quality or they'll just go to like custom or restore to default. And that's where I run into problems during the stream and I start seeing a red bar and my stream starts to buffer. So what you want to do is you want to start off low. And thankfully they have a couple of low presets here. They have a preset for Twitch and a preset for YouTube. And that means it's automatically set for a good setting for both those services. So I, use, I, I usually uh, use those as a benchmark. And if my streams are pretty smooth, I might uh, up it to uh, high quality or something like that. So you want to go to Twitch, you'll see the quality. Um, if you don't have a good setup, you want to go for quality over speed. 
um, just I, I, honestly, it, this is a whole like trial and error situation. Now, the target bit rate is the the quality in which your stream is being outputted to whatever service it is. So you actually want to start this. You want to start this fairly small, and then if your stream remains big, then you want to up it. So I think I started off streaming at like twenty five hundred. Don't ask me what exactly it means. And then I would hit apply, and then when I start streaming, if I'm in the green, I would say to myself, okay, my computer can handle outputting better quality stream, and I might up it by 500. Uh, you won't see it in this tutorial, but there will be a green or a colored marker while you're streaming, and it's just about, if you're in the green, just up it every time you go recording or streaming. Uh, you want to go recording here. This is only if you want to record. It's fairly basic. It'll tell you the settings in which it's recording your stream, or if you're just using OBS to record on its own, you can just choose whatever files you want there. I do MP4. I'm going to use all this myself for the tutorial, so this is very useful. And again, it has a preset down here. I'm actually not sure why. And yeah. And then audio and replay buffer. I never use these. On to audio. So there's a bunch of audio channels here, which is fairly useful. Desktop audio, you'll see in your sound panel below that you'll have a desktop, and that is basically entirely everything that is heard from the desktop. And sometimes that's useful, sometimes that, that's not. If you have Discord and a game and your microphone, you want to separate a few. So thankfully, it has some uh, um, mic or auxiliary audio device. And uh, if you have it plugged in, if you have a headset or if you have your microphone, it'll, it should show up here. And you want to go for your microphone and select that and you're good to go all this uh nice handy settings uh enable push to mute push to talk you can tinker with that i don't i don't, I don't use that stuff i don't know all right next one is video now video is just the quality of the output you're giving and i think this probably applies to recording and streaming so again depending on the scale or the quality of your setup um, I would recommend starting low with this, maybe go down to 720p resolution and go up from there and um, yeah, uh, common SPS, just start low and tinker up. I think this video setting is set based on the uh, the output stream presets maybe, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but again, start low and then go up from there if you stay in the green. Hotkeys, I don't use this, but um, mother of God, I have accidentally started streaming by pressing F1 so many times. Uh, so, uh, word of advice, never have your camera pointed at you when you're doing something that's not streaming, because that can, that can, that can go bad. Uh, but yeah, you can just, you know, you can just clear all it, you can just clear it, clear it, clear it up, just clear it all, you're fine. Or you can just set stuff, and if you're not an idiot like me. And then advanced, um, Process priority. So price process priority for uh, you can set this for all software if you're a, a bit a bit good with computers. You can set the process priority for any software uh, by usually like right clicking or going into the control panel and giving such software um, just more brain power. Um, so for OBS, obviously you'd want that because you want OBS to be able to output the highest quality as possible. So you want to give this baby a high. And that's the highest I got. So yeah, there you go. Uh, the rest, I don't really know. Don't really care. You hit apply. I think I changed it a bit, but no, I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, there you go. So the next thing I have to explain, there's a few small things. Here's the mixer. You can see my microphone audio is going up, up, and down, up, and down. And then the desktop audio, that'll actually play the music from like Hearthstone or something like that. And then here's transitions. So you'll notice if I switch between the main camera, hello. And then back, it's a bit of a fade, and you can set the options here with the duration. You can set the actual way it does it. I, I've never seen this. Oh, cut is just straight. Like cut is just cut. Uh, and you can add a bunch here. There's a lot of customization you can do here. There's like a studio mode. Oh my God, what is going on? And uh, you know, the button that starts the stream. That's uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can you can play with. But I've shown you the basics. I think there's one last thing I need to mention, guys, is sound checking. Like. You have a record mode here. I would suggest to everyone before they begin streaming is to use the record function. So if you have your game up like Hearthstone and then you have the microphone audio, you want to do a sound check. So the way I do it is I'll have the game up and I'll have its volume up and then I'll have my microphone. And just imagine you can hear Hearthstone music playing in the background. It's just like blaring over me and I'm, I'm just basically microphone zero decibels, microphone two decibels, microphone four decibels, microphone six decibels, microphone eight decibels, 
microphone 10 decibels. So if you do that every time before you start a stream, then you'll, you'll save yourself minutes of saying, hey guys, can you hear me? And your chat is like, I can't hear you, bro. What, what's going on? I just see Hearthstone. So I highly suggest you do a quick sound check. The recording will just end up in your videos in your computer. Just go back, select it, listen to it. And then based on what you said, you'd be like, okay, six decibels sounded really good. And keep in mind that the volume of the game can get higher or lower depending on like quiet moments in the game and stuff. So it's always best to have yourself um, not bleeding loud, but definitely louder than the game itself. Um, depending on the game, you can just have the game very soft in the background if you're just a talkative streamer. Okay. All right, there's two things I forgot to explain during that. Uh, one is layouts. So in layouts, when you go through your sources in OBS, you'll see a bunch of boxes. When you select one of those, you'll see a red box highlight around it, and you'll see those little crop circles that you can click and drag. So here I have an example of those is my little layout. And just imagine, actually, I'll just do it right now. My uh, video source, which is my camera, I double click that, and I'm reducing that all the way down. And then I'm dragging it over, and, um, and what I said earlier about its order, I have to put it in front of the box. And just imagine I made this a little, more, little bit more neater, but that's essentially now uh, my new camera layout. And you can do that with every image, uh, you can do that with every source that you contain in it. So you can put the chat here, you can put your face here, you can put a layout everywhere. And it's nice and easy and adjustable. And if you're handy with Photoshop, you could make a really nice layout for yourself. Now the next thing, and I know people have asked me this a bunch and I might just get this explained in just a minute. How do I stream from my mobile? So how I do it is you have to invest about $150, $200 to get a uh, stream card. Uh, uh, how do, I don't know how to say that correctly, but there's a, a card called the, El, El, it's a capture card basically. Uh, and I have the Elgato HD uh, 60s and uh, there's a couple of versions of it just check out Elga elgato gaming uh, .com. they have all their uh, different versions of it and what you want to do is you have two hdmi connections on either side of it one goes into your computer that's the out and then the inside will have whatever you want to uh, basically capture so any device that has a hdmi uh, input into it can be captured like a playstation 3 or 4 or a switch like anything so you just have to hook those up now it would take an entire other tutorial and I just recommend someone else's tutorial to explain Elgato because it is really finicky and honestly if you can't find the capture it's just a matter of resetting it and see if it works so on this side where you want to capture something also this is a HDMI core just for power so you just want to hook that into your computer this HDMI will go in so for mobile though, because a mobile doesn't have a HDMI connection because it's too large, I have to spend $50 on this connection. And this connection here has a HDMI port and a uh, lightning cable because my, my phone will die, it'll drain otherwise. So I just hook that in and I connect it up to my phone. And after searching for, for a bunch, I'll eventually pick up the signal from my phone. But again, a lot of detail with that because it fails a lot. Let me just show you really quickly on the stream what that looks like. If you want to, after you hook up your phone with your Elgato capture, you want to go and go to video capture device and then just name it Elgato or name it mobile or whatever you want. And then in here, you'll see a bunch of sources and Elgato will come up and you want to select Elgato game capture HD and then hit OK. Uh, before you can see no signal that's a good sign that's actually picking something up rather than it's not picking something up but at least it, it recognizes Elgato and then there's another configure uh, button here you actually can't see this screen uh, you probably can here actually hold on a second yeah you can see that little screen there it keeps disappearing but this uh, allows you to set uh, what you're trying to capture like a PS3 or an iPad it's pretty tricky, but that's the basics of how I stream uh, to mobile. And if you want more info on that, I, I, I will have a link down below to a, a better tutorial. <laughs> Speaking of better tutorials, after just watching the latest gaming careers ch uh, video that I, I, was, I was emphasizing earlier, uh, I realized that in the latest OBS, there is a tool called Auto Configuration Wizard Beta. Now, I can't go into it right now because I'm currently recording, but if you go into this, it brings you to through the settings step by step and what it does is it'll then 
it'll then post a bunch of information or it'll stream a bunch of information to whatever setup you have, whether it's Twitch or YouTube. And then it'll tell what your configuration should be and it'll ask you to agree to that. And then OBS will be set up as best it can for you, your computer. So all this, all the information I gave you earlier, you could just skip that and just go to this setting, auto configuration, and then stream from there and see how it goes. So one last point I want to make before I wrap up OBS uh, is the equipment you use. Now, not specifically important to OBS, but spe but important to streaming. Uh, when I started off streaming, I was using uh, I was using this headset. Uh, this headset's fairly basic. It's just got a jack connection in it, and I would put it on, and the audio quality was fine. It was moderate, like you could hear me. Uh, but if you're a bit of an audiophile and you want to hear me like really crystal clear, you want to get you know something like this. So I'd say that headset cost me about 50 bucks. That's fine. I know so many people that have headsets that are like 100, 200 bucks and the microphones are actually pretty good quality. Um, but if you want to specifically have a good audio experience for your viewers, you want to invest 200, maybe a bit more for a microphone. And I, I know, I know that sounds like a lot and you're definitely not going to make that money back streaming unless you're very talented. Uh, and it takes a long time, but I would highly suggest getting a microphone. I know like Blue Yeti is something that recommends. I don't know. People are going to be in the comments saying, that's a terrible microphone. Don't recommend that. Ah, I don't know. It's a, it's a better microphone than a, than a potato. Um, yeah, and then the same thing is um, to people that don't want to use the camera, you don't have to use the camera. But like higher quality equipment, it will multiply the amount of viewers. It will multiply the amount of interaction that your people have and it's just it's just it's an investment that will pay back to you if 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 you think that streaming is something that you enjoy uh it will be worth it in the long run if you keep keep doing it as a hobby now once you have obs set up the way you like it the last thing is streaming itself to this i say have fun play something you will like or think that you will like because if you're having fun your viewers will too Having said that, playing a game that is new or trending can definitely increase viewers and subscribers. I've learned from experience that playing a trending game can definitely increase the viewers and subscribers, but you have to assess yourself if it's a game that you actually like. If you can find a game that gives you both viewers and subscribers and you enjoy it, then you found your game. Last but not least, be yourself. Streaming can become a daunting experience when you always stream with a heightened or exaggerated version of yourself. Now doing that in small doses is fine, but if you adopt that persona early on, then you'll be very hesitant to stream when you just want to feel like you. Try be like yourself when you're with friends or with guests, you know, turn it on for an hour or two. Talk, smile, and also to fill in the silences, get used to talking out loud and thinking out loud. Think of something like, oh, that was a really good headshot, or, oh, how do I solve this puzzle? Stuff like that really fills in the gaps and interacts with the viewers and just keeps everything very interesting. It creates a good atmosphere. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, this was my kind of spin on doing a streaming tutorial. Um, there's tons of them out there, but I thought I'd just give my own because a lot of people has been, have been asking me. And uh, just to really communicate that if you don't feel like you're a streamer, like, you know, Ninja or Kriparian or Toast or all the other streamers, you don't have to be at that level. You don't have to stream nonstop. You don't have to be super energetic. Just be yourself. Just do it at your own pace. Try it once or twice a, a month or whatever and just kind of see if it's something you like. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of streamers, like it doesn't even have to be games. It can just be being online. Some people do prank phone calls. I don't recommend that unless you know what you're doing and it's good. Um, I see people like streaming cooking and streaming drawing and just like you can you can do anything at your own pace and there's going to be a viewership for it. So I recommend you just look look into those groups and uh, see what you can do. And um, if you have a computer and you're watching me right now, you probably have a computer that can stream something with a webcam or a, a game like Faster Than Light or Binding of Isaac. An anything. Those games are amazing. And you know, if you stick your personality onto a stream like that, it could be a lot of fun for a lot of other people. So anyway, uh, that's it. Have a good day, guys. Take care.